They don't believe that you're honest and trustworthy. Do you understand why they feel that way? Well, I think when you are subjected to the kind of constant uh, barrage of uh, attacks that are largely fomented by and coming from the right. Hillary Clinton has finally deemed the world and her potential subjects worthy of hearing her thoughts about becoming your president. A much ballyhooed sit-down interview with a major broadcast network where all would be revealed and it would be rejoicing throughout the land. And now we all know what her strategy will be to affect the takeover. Blame the Republicans, of course. This is where we begin with the political animal. She is a veteran columnist for the Fiscal Times and a frequent contributor at foxnews.com. Welcome back, Liz Peake. And he is the former deputy staff secretary to President Bill Clinton and veteran Democratic strategist. Welcome back, David Goodfriend. Thank you both for joining us. Liz, I'm going to begin with you. It's all the Republicans' fault. It's not my fault. This really was, uh, in many ways, this was a fun interview to watch because I don't know if we got to learn anything new at all. Oh, I don't think we learned anything new, but this is Hillary's approach to this campaign. She is the first lady-in-waiting president, uh, and basically her strategy is to make no mistakes uh, and basically glide to the White House. And sadly, I think this uh, victimization thing that she's go using uh, is really kind of appealing to women. Of course, one of her great voting blocks is going to be women who want a, a president, a female president. But, I mean, I just think it's sort of sad, right? And also, interestingly, it conjures up that horrible interview from so many years ago where she talked about the Monica Lewinsky scandal being a vast right-wing conspiracy. I would think she'd be smart enough not to dredge that one up again because it's not a very attractive, bald-faced lie because Hillary knew what was going on. Uh, so I just thought this whole thing, I thought the interview was absolutely dreadful. David, I have to be honest, I spoke to a lot of my liberal friends and even they said they expected a lot more out of Hillary Clinton and even they were rather disappointed. What was your take? Well, I watched the whole interview and uh, you'll be surprised to know I think she did a great job. And I think one of the shocking, reasons she shocking did a great indeed. job, <laughs> uh, the part of the interview that you did not play where she kept talking about this issue, she said, look, I've stood for election twice in the state of New York and for confirmation by the U.S. Senate to be Secretary of State, and in my view, says Hillary Clinton, I trust the American people 100% to figure things out and get it right. What she said at the, at the second part of that interview, in response to this question was, look, a lot of stuff gets thrown at me, I push back, but then voters make up their minds. They look at the evidence, they make up their minds, and she says she trusts the American people to get it right. That's exactly what Bill Clinton used to say to us in the White House staff, even outside of view of the cameras, he would say, the American people usually get it exactly right. We have to give them the time, the chance to work through things and get it, and they do. So I have a lot of confidence in Hillary Clinton's ability to weather the attacks and put forward all the evidence and let the American people decide. After all, that's what elections are for. All right, Liz, I saw you trying to get an answer there. I got 30 seconds for your response. Okay. Go ahead. I, first of all, I, New York State is not the United States of America. New York State is overwhelmingly Democratic, and yes, she won two elections there right after, with an enormous amount of rain name recognition and very little opposition. Uh, and in terms of what people have thrown at the Clintons, almost all of it is real and verifiable and justified. So they have been able, they are truly the Teflon couple. Things just slide off them, but that's why people don't trust them. And look, polls don't lie. They do get it right. Americans do get it right. They don't trust the Clintons for good reason. All right, let's go to the issues now. And one issue specifically, sanctuary cities that we are hearing a tremendous amount about here in the last couple of days with regard to San Francisco, the killing of a young woman by an illegal immigrant. We all know the story. David, let me come to you first on this. Donald Trump is the one who really opened this up. People can hammer away at Donald Trump all you want, but he made a comment. He got people talking. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be talking about this. And to have cities that can tell the feds, absolutely no, we're not going to help you, finding someone who could be sitting there waiting to kill, waiting to hurt someone for whatever reason, this, even Democrats are coming out against this, David. It's very analogous to the attorney general of the state of Texas saying he's going to ignore the Supreme Court decision on gay marriage. Very often you have local and state officials who bristle at federal directives. And the fact of the matter is the Constitution made this clear over two centuries ago, that the federal government has supremacy on issues of immigration. And when the Supreme Court rules on the law, that is the law of the land. And tough luck if you don't like it, if you're a local authority or a state attorney general who doesn't like the Supreme Court. But you see, it has to, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You can't say on the one hand that 
uh, sanctuary cities are, are bad, and then on the other hand, start waving the flag for states' rights when it comes to gay marriage. You can't have it both ways. All right, let's, let's stick to this now, because right where we're at, and you're right on all these things, your opinion, but let me go to Liz now. i got about a minute left here. Let's focus again, Liz, on Donald Trump, who opened this door. Do whatever you want, say whatever you want, but he's the one that started this conversation. Yes, and, and many people, including many Democrats, think that the Republicans are really on their back foot now because of Donald Trump on the issue of immigration. And I would really disagree with that. First of all, the Sensco issue kind of raises some of the unintended consequences, if you will, of some of the anti-anti-immigration movement. But also, the GOP is on the right side of this issue, and they're on the popular side. They're talking about secure borders. No one's talking about de deportations or uh, self-deport case. We're talking about secure borders and then various pathways to legal status. And I think that's kind of where the American people are. The executive amnesty for Obama, which was going to allow five, four or five million people to stay in this country unchallenged, you know, that just really didn't go over very well after the surge at the border last summer. That really turned people around. And I think the GOP is then actually in pretty good shape on this. Donald Trump may make a lot of enemies. That isn't the GOP talking. That's Donald Trump talking. And the discussion God, continues. And he got the discussion talking and he got the discussion moving. David, unfortunately, we're all out of time. But, oh, don't fear. I have a feeling that we're going to be talking about this for quite some time. David, good friend, Liz Peek, thanks so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Now we're going to turn it over to our viewers because we have a simple question to ask about Donald Trump. Tell us a little bit about Donald Trump. Speak to us. We'll speak back. It's coming up as we continue right here on The Hardline.